Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, stick around. We've got Ideas by Elliot. Hey, folks, you're listening to Ideas by Elliot. And we're here with Ideas by Elliot. Podcast, podcast, <laughs> podcast. <laughs> This is the Ideas by Elliot podcast, sponsored by Camera Corner Studios, Yikes Salon, Trisha Nell Law, and Release Wire. I'm Elliot Christensen, and normally I spend my time working with clients on their internet projects. Websites, marketing, email, all the stuff they need to get their business found online. This is my chance to take a break and talk in-depth with the most interesting people I know. There are no rules. There's no censor. There are no do-overs. It's raw, unscripted, and never edited. This is episode number 20 with website master and entrepreneur aficionado David Snowpeck. In this episode, we talk about Drupal, startups, and slicing pie. We also have Max on the soundboard. We have a great music track from David's old band and a track from his friend Sigmund. And while the music plays, run over to iTunes and Stitcher and give a rating and a review of the show. It helps other people find us. So that's a song that uh, recorded when I was 17 with my band at the time. And yeah, my buddy, the... the what was the name of the band? Oh, jeez. I don't remember. So we... It's your band! Well, the thing is, we, we changed our name like every show. Yeah. So like we were raising the roof with Jesus for a couple of shows. That's a cool that's, name. <laughs> I, I changed my name of the band like every couple of shows. Exactly. <laughs> the band name is like the most fun part. How many shows do you guys have? Like, so first it was, like, the Warlords, then it was Max and the other people, well, and now it's <laughs> the Tandem Monkeys. Which was my favorite name. But how many, how many shows did you guys have? Uh, yeah. So in, in high school? Yeah. I don't know, maybe a dozen oh, really? total, something like that? Well, I mean, like, most high school bands say, you know, they're like, oh, this is too much like work. Or Well, yeah, I mean, this is over a period of, like, four years, and it was several so, different bands that kind know. of constantly evolved. And I, I did not realize it. Like, that's... Good. That's a pretty cool track. Thank you. I think. I don't know, for 17 especially. Yeah, I mean, so I don't with know. actual instruments. It's <laughs> so like when I make music, yeah. I use GarageBand, and I say it's real music. There was no GarageBand. No, I know. I think that was recorded on you a Tascam cassette four track. No, in a basement. <laughs> in a basement. We were a little, a little above garage level. Yeah. I can't remember, but one of my songs, one of the tracks that I recorded had some ukulele in the beginning. A real ukulele? Yeah. Or like a digital ukulele? Real ukulele. Yeah. Oh, cool. No, Max is an actual musician. I am the imposter. And then the one yeah. that is f- that was for Trisha's birthday, that one had ukulele through like the first half of the song. So cool. I, 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 I do uh, like a pre-roll intro, but uh, I'm here with uh, David Snowpeck. Very happy to be here. Yeah. I'm super excited to be on the show. I've been uh, listening. Uh, I kept, I caught up on like all of October this week. Wow, that's that's crazy. So the only like binge listening that I've been doing is on the mm-hmm. like the the add-ons to the serial podcast. So there's like there's one that's called the Serial Dynasty, and then there's an I don't know there's there's uh, and then like this I forgot what the other one is called, and I'm like like burning through them so that I catch up because I don't know I don't know if you list, you know anything about that I don't actually I have no idea what you're talking mm-hmm. about so there well the thing that got people back interested into podcasts or brought new people in or whatever mm-hmm. whatever you want to say was this thing from uh, uh, I think NPR kind of funded it or something and uh, it's called Serial and it was about this this kid who was 17 at the time hmm. whose ex-girlfriend got murdered in Baltimore and he's life in prison and he likely did not do it. 
Oof. And there's like mountains of proof that he didn't do it. Mm-hmm. And and there's there's really no proof that he did do it. And did he it? confess or something nope. like that? No. No, really. Because no, no. usually that's how that goes down, right? right. Someone is pressured into a confession. Right. And so it's, su- it's super crazy. And this is why people are so into it because there's like the uh, uh, there's this guy named Jay that, that was his friend that said he was part of the murder and they both did it together. But this guy was like a drug dealer informant mm. guy who the, the, the state pit, like hooked him up with an attorney. They're not supposed to do that. Um, mm. They use cell phone records as like the basis for like the timeline saying what went wrong. And this was 1999, so these weren't even digital cell phones. Um, not that that matters. They were actually more accurate back then. Hmm. But the radius was bigger. And so, like, yeah, well, it's somewhere in this 10-square-foot region, probably. And that's, that's if it, the signal didn't bounce off of anything. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, can't, you can't judge where somebody was. Right. And right. even if you could, it was only on uh, the, uh, the, the calling side, not the... Like the so what you're saying is there was some serious reasonable doubt. Everything was wrong, and then you're like, why would the cops do this? And you're like, and then you realize, oh, they get a a new murder case every day in Baltimore. They just want to close them quick. So yeah, but then you see that they have one of the highest closing rates in the country, even though they have so many. So like their rate is like 95 percent. Anyway, I anyway, we're totally off track here. What are we even talking? (laughs) Well, you know what? That's probably more interesting (laughs) than anything I have to talk about. But so the reason that I want you here. Okay. Is because to me, you are the master guru of what we do of web. Shut really, up. oh, <laughs> and and I and Max is my, Max is operating the soundboard, so he's going to catch me when I say something stupid. But uh, so we use this platform called Drupal, and a lot of the people that listen to the show probably have no idea what that is, and mm-hmm. I don't, and I don't really think that that they should have to care so much. But this is a, a platform that we use, and t- you are the grandmaster in. At least in Wisconsin, you know, maybe not in the universe, but in Wisconsin, you're the grandmaster. Well, thank you for saying. I don't know if I'm really the grandmaster. Oh, and, man. And I knew you'd say that, but I, I have proof. I have proof. It would have been perfect proof. for while you were saying, <laughs> for while you were talking about cereal. Oh, what? I am super duper cereal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah. See, you, you got to be on your game, Max. So you can flip through these. There's lots of them. Yeah. All right. So, and I, I don't know if I said Max is on the soundboard, right? You said Max is on the soundboard. Yeah. So, uh, so hopefully we don't go overboard on on soundboard <laughs> editions, but whatever. It's Halloween today, even though uh, yeah, only 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 it's top Halloween. secret people will hear this before Halloween. So, we, are we live? Is no, the live stream no, going? No. Oh. Well, you know, I kind of gave up on that because really. Just, well, you got to announce it. You got to let people know that the live stream is happening. Wh- okay, where? Everywhere, Twitter, Facebook, yeah. email. I don't know if you're into doing email, but I I think it would be worth it. I would want to be on that mailing what, list. When though? Day is before. Okay. I I think you really got to do like a week. Really? Well, I don't know if a day is enough. You'll you'll get more people if you do a week. But the way you guys do the show is that feasible? Can you do it week in advance? Usually we're scheduled. <laughs> at least I would say the shortest yeah. is four days ahead. I mean, if you okay. do that far in advance, you should do like a, a weekly notification, and a two day, day notification, before. day before, hour before, all that stuff. But I would love to listen live. Every time on the thing you're saying, you know, that you're, there's a live stream going and people yeah. ask questions. I'm like, why am I not on the live stream? Oh. I guess. See, but the thing is the way your show runs, yeah, it's practically live anyway. Because we have never in any of these, ev- uh, we're, we're probably close to 20. Yeah. Nothing has been cut. This is either 19 or 20. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I, should, I should know, but I do not. But like, seriously, <laughs> this, is, this is as close to live as it gets. Oh. Nothing has been cut Nothing's at ever all. been cut. But it'd, it'd be great to ask questions. Yeah. Say yeah. random the things most I while ever you're trying to focus. In audition, I turn... <laughs> Yeah, there can't be any focus. I think our time is up. <laughs> Back to topic. So the, the only thing I, the only like uh, like production thing that I ever do in post is mm-hmm. I, I turn on like the noise, the dynamic noise thing. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's it. And I, mm-hmm. I don't know if you turn, do you turn anything on on the I by do, default? Uh, so for those of you Adobe users at home, mm-hmm. after the show is produced, that's nobody. we do a, uh, a speech volume leveler. Okay. And that's it. 
That's all you do. Okay. That's it. Yeah, because that's I think that's all I don't do. Yeah, we record so live. Good. I multi-track it in case we do change our mind and really want to edit something. But yeah. then I take the main mix that I mixed live and do a noise compression. So if somebody wanted to come in and do a real show, <laughs> they could come in and you could properly mix it and edit it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is really early to get into my ad spot. Oh, we may as well. We may as well just roll right into that. That's what you're talking oh, about. Oh, well, whatever. We can we can do that. And uh, you know, we don't have to talk for half hour like I've done. Yeah. Before. See, there you are. So I know. See, I'm getting. So better come here, and I will put the noise volume or the sorry the speech volume leveler on your podcast nine two zero two seven two zero one four eight. You know what? That is probably all that's needed, but for anybody that's listening, right. honestly, is to be reminded how they can get a hold of you. There you uh, are. Yeah. So, so uh, what are we talking about today? Uh, well, we're talking about David Snowpeck. But I, but uh, so just briefly, and then we'll be done with that little ad spot. Um, you were you got here before I did because oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm habitually late no matter what I do. I'm yep. always I always am in here. It's almost it's almost it is a joke now with Nick. Like <laughs> 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 because like uh, I was I was gonna I like uh, the last one I was gonna be 15 minutes early. The dude showed up a half hour early. Uh, un- I was completely unprepared for that. I wasn't even here yet. Yeah. So I, I'm like that. I, after that, I'm like, the world is just against me. It doesn't matter, you know. And I don't want to get here an hour early and be in Nick's face. So, so anyway, uh, when you got in here, uh, you were like checking out soundboard. So like, give yeah. Me, give me your brief thoughts about our little studio here. No, this this place is awesome. Um, you know, the little studio area here, totally set up. You could do a real show here, right? Uh, some real professional audio stuff they have the green screen nick's over in his booth over there me and him were geeking out about his uh digital soundboard which allows more than one input unlike a regular (laughs) mac (laughs) yes it's super impressive place and the the business model sounds really cool uh giving more people access to this kind of high level equipment by renting it for the hour rather than having to rent it for the day or buy it no, this is super cool. I wish we had something like this in Milwaukee. I I would totally have used it for my uh, you know what? YouTube show so, I used to do. So for the green screen alone, I think for some of those people, it might be worth a trip up because uh, like for people who do websites, um, I I feel that the green screen is a killer idea because uh, Nick mentioned last time that he will save the footage of you know the, the figure on mm-hmm. the green screen so you could put in different stuff so like you could do like a generic recording and then change it up seasonally and swap that out on your website and or in YouTube or whatever sure and sure it, it's, it's sort of an evergreen uh, promotional spot and it's super cheap like for in and out a thousand bucks he could he can get that first at least that first one done and then uh you know you can work in the changes like to me that's amazing when we first did our first uh uh tv commercial for our business it was like five thousand dollars and it was Oof. and it was it was horrible like we were willing to pay the money mm-hmm. uh because we were young and stupid uh but Okay, so I kind of created a monster. I was afraid of that. He's on point today, though. I know. I I knew he would be. That's why I'm like, yes, you should come, and you should totally run the soundboard. Because I'm always fumbling, and it's usually me that needs to be called out. Right. I, I think he's going to put the idiot button into the favorites. Yeah. Oh, is there favorites? Yeah. So anyway, uh, enough said about the ad spot. So uh, what what we can talk about is really whatever you want to talk about. Cool. Uh, so the things that I usually ask people are uh, uh, bis- business questions mm-hmm. or you know personal so, questions. Mm-hmm. I, I would love to talk about uh, like entrepreneurship with you. Uh, yes. Because you know you've been doing, uh, you and Gina have had your web design company for a crazy long time now. Yeah, like almost 20 years. Yeah, it, yeah. It hurts my brain. <laughs> and you know, I, I haven't been doing uh, you know, my thing as long, but I, I think it would be super cool to talk about it because it's something that, that we both have a lot of experience in and maybe yeah. can... I don't want to say educate because this isn't really an educational show, but you know, uh, tell tell people who aren't entrepreneurs who maybe want to be entrepreneurs some stuff about. So that. we've established that our show is not a comedy show, and it is also not an educational. Show. <laughs> <laughs> it's Very not hard. timely, so it's not a news it, show. It is really kind of both. And neither. <laughs> I mean, I, you've, you've had some really... really say what kind of show it is. I, I'd say maybe an interview show, because well, it absolutely. seems to focus on... Because you've had yeah. some really amazing people on. Uh, who was it? Uh, Dan, who uh, is going to be in Dancing with Our yes. Stars, but yes. had 
has a titanium knee (laughs) and was like giving public uh, motivational speeches to like tens of thousands of people at age 14. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. I was blown away by that. And I was sort of set up because there's a there's a well-known guy around town, uh, Brian Danzinger. And he's like, oh, I can't be on your show until you have people that are more worthy on than me. And I'm like, oh, I (laughs) roll because, you know, because he's he donates everything. He's he Mm -hmm. runs the there's an annual Halloween food drive party that he runs he, he's, he gets thousands of people to come and bring canned food and whatever and he's like no you need to have dan on he's you know very inspirational i'm like oh yeah i'm sure and i didn't know anything about him other than what i googled none of that stuff was googleable i was i uh, i don't know how i came across i, I tried not to re-listen to that one <laughs> I'm like, i was there were there were points where i was just like i feel like my jaw just dropped so it, it yeah. went it went really well i think you know because you sort of discovered about him along with everyone who was listening and just right. sort of kept digging deeper and finding out oh man there's just more and more amazing things and uh yeah so i mean that's the side benefit to being underprepared <laughs> <laughs> but honestly i mean i tried to be prepared but mm-hmm. like i'd like to be surprised too though so mm-hmm. whatever Unedited. Yeah, I mean, and then you had the the woman whose uh, son runs a nonprofit in Ethiopia. I mean, like I really amazing people yeah. you've interviewed on the show so far. Yeah, and uh, and in every case, these are all direct friends or friends of friends. Every time, so these are all people that I know. So I'm. This is why I did this because I'm like I know some really awesome people, and people don't know that. Yeah, I mean, it's oh, they're. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like okay, finding fine. <laughs> finding the the amazing people among the otherwise seemingly normal people, you know. Right. Which I I don't, does is that cliche? I not? don't know. I don't know any any other show that does that. Uh, so at the end, and I'll ask you this too. Uh, you know, I always ask everybody uh, when they come back to co-host, who would they like to be sitting in the you know in Max's chair so he's not hitting buttons all day. Uh, which is you can hit buttons. I'm just saying, you know. Uh, but everybody always says Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Oprah because I say please say Oprah you know <laughs> but um, but really like they don't need a platform mm-hmm. you know if Aaron Rodgers wants all he could get all of the national networks if he just said I have an announcement to make I right, have a press right. conference everyone would show up with microphones Oprah the same <laughs> thing right mm-hmm. uh, you know but uh, Dan couldn't do that and I mean none none of us can really. Um, so I don't know like that that's uh, I hear their stories and like I'm blown away by that stuff yeah like yeah. Th- those two like in particular like I'm just it makes me feel inspired but mm-hmm. uh, insignificant at the same time <laughs> <laughs> like wow uh, yeah so you have a titanium knee and you talk to thousands of people inspire them and I don't even feel like editing my show when I'm done with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think those are maybe the extreme cases, but even the less extreme ones like are still like super inspiring in their own way. Like everyone has a little bit of an inspiring story, like yeah. the the punk rock documentary. That's oh, super cool. Love that. Yeah. Um, even it was uh, uh, Don was his name who was just yeah. talking about being a freelancer and that kind of stuff. I mean, even yeah. that it's it's normal everyday stuff, but right. not everyone has a platform to tell their story. Right. So. So tell me your story. Well, that's the thing. I don't know if I really have a story. That's why oh I gosh. kind of wanted to 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 jam more about you know uh, so, the topic of entrepreneurship. Yeah. So uh, over the last year or so, you've been talking about some ideas for uh, service based uh, mm-hmm. businesses, and so we've been jamming. That's your word. I, I don't usually say that, but, <laughs> but I but I like that. Uh, super. Super. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually an accident. <laughs> but probably appropriate. Uh, and um, this reminds me, we were watching The Good Wife last night, mm-hmm. and there was a guy who was losing his mind, and the other attorney would constantly object because it threw him off his game, and then the, he finally just gave in and settled. That's how I feel right now. He throws me off my game, and I'm like, oh, I don't even know what I was saying. Wonderful. Um, so we've been jamming about different business ideas Mm -hmm. and you've had some things percolating under and um you're very cautious and i'm very much like just do it i I, okay yeah i would say between us there's there's uh we're talking relatively yeah i'm i'm cautious we're both entrepreneurs though so we're both risk takers absolutely if you were to compare us to any normal person (laughs) (laughs) they might not be able to tell the difference right right so i mean i i 
when we're talking, sometimes I feel like uh, the difference between me and you is the difference between you and normal people. <laughs> so, <then I'm> like, <laughs> so how crazy am I? And no, no, I do things like no. this. Like, uh, um, I don't make any money doing this, mm-hmm. but um, but I feel momentum. And I think that uh, a certain t- type of people enjoy what you know what we talk about and enjoy you know hearing about new people and whatever right um and i know that i will make money at it i'm not gonna mm-hmm. i'll never be driving an acura nsx like i want to but um but that's okay mm-hmm. like i don't that's not what i'm in the game for you know like steve jobs always said you don't want to end up the richest guy in the graveyard you mm-hmm. are a huge nerd <laughs> <laughs> i was waiting to do that all day <laughs> <laughs> you already used it you got to find a new one now so i don't know like that's where i come from in terms of like just well, yeah, jump in and do I, it, right? I think any amount of entrepreneurship or even not entrepreneurship but starting a new project like a, a non-profit or something you have to just jump in and do it yeah. and because before you do it, you don't really know anything, right? right. It's all guesses until, right. you've, until you've gone out into the world and tried it. Um, and you're always in the beginning not going to make any money or not going to get attention if you're going you know, for something non-monetary. Right. There's always that runway period. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, we're still in this runway period. Maybe the runway will be uh, infinite. I don't know. Right, right. I mean, uh, that's the fate of most startups, right? Yeah. The you you run out of motivation or money <laughs> so, before you ever the, take off. But that's why, uh, like, I'm super lucky that that Nick came along and he's like, I am. I have a magical facility that you can utilize, uh, and saved me from myself because mm-hmm. otherwise I'd be thousands of dollars in debt on something that may never make money. For, right, for right, me, right. Um, and I, I I'm okay with it never making money as long as I'm not like. Um, atrophying money <laughs> well i mean i'm even okay with uh you know living in a box um you know i could live in a box right outside the studio that'd be that'd be okay with me max prefers to not have a box for a house <laughs> so you know you have responsibilities mm-hmm. when you become an old person um and So we may be living in a box in a few months. Just heads up on that. So, yes. in, <laughs> so I I don't know. See, you got to be careful. You got to be careful with the soundboard. David's gonna, David's going to throw the microphone down. And he's like, I am out of here. <laughs> You're cutting into my time, kid. So. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's if those are the things that you're thinking about. Well, so but- on on that same note, like I think you're doing this right. You know, taking advantage of free opportunities and people you know and and all of that. I see a lot of uh, people who are first time entrepreneurs like spending loads of money on things that they right. think they need, like, like three hundred dollar soundboards. <laughs> <laughs> Or worse, right? That could be Max's new business. Right, right. I, but I mean, that's super cheap. But I'm like, mm, how about not right now? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's people who be like, oh, you know, my business is going to do this and this and this. So I need to, you know, right. get a storefront or like buy the equipment or all of these things. Yeah. And they end up blowing all this money before they even have the opportunity to find out what their business is, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Been there, done that. Uh, so I've made all of the mistakes, mm-hmm. and that's where I know uh, the the I know the key now. <laughs> I should write a book. <laughs> so what's the key? Well, I mean, it's the obvious, easy things that everybody tells you that you don't pay attention to when, when, <laughs> you, when you first go into business, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, don't spend any money. Um, make sure that you're doing something that you love, and. Uh, that that's enough. I, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd maybe put some qualifications even on doing something that you love, right? Oh yeah. Like I feel like you have to love a certain aspect of the day to day work. Right. You don't necessarily have to love what your product is or who your customer is. I mean, that's also another way to go, where you just love your customer. You're a hero for that particular type of customer. But, you, you, but then you're doing what you love. Sure. You sure. know, if 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 the thing that is that you like the people end of things, mm-hmm. which honestly that's where I'm at. I mean, yeah. uh, and the, oh, there's a see, there's a button that says I'm a people person. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was that was on cue. You need but, the psychic soundboard. But uh, um, I and uh, whatever. There's half of all people tolerate me and the other half despise me and that you know that's fine but i like most people Mm -hmm. and i prefer the people end of things more than the the tech end of things so you know you challenged me to 
to do a presentation next month on uh, you know converting Drupal eight modules, and it's gonna be awesome, and it will be awesome, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I just uh, I'm not the same nerd that I used to be, and now I'm uh, that. I know I can do it, but mm-hmm. uh, but that's that ends up being something that I I put off a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, that's super key, though, knowing like what things you are actually interested in doing. Yeah, and you know what things like you could probably do, but like isn't what you want to do, right? Because then that you know to partner with someone who maybe has that other strength. And so, over the years, though, um, this is this is the whole uh, this is the folly of the entrepreneur. They think they're better than everybody else at everything, right? Mm-hmm. And I do not at accounting. I suck uh, at um, at sales, I'm mediocre. Um, at the technical stuff, I am pretty good at it. And I have a lot of background and I have a lot of diverse things that I bring in when I'm, you know, when I'm mm-hmm. coding or when I'm, you know, creating something, right? Um, but yet I am not deep enough in any of those pockets where I feel like I'm like you, you know, like I feel like you're one of the supreme leaders in certain categories. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess I've specialized on more of the technical end mm-hmm. than the than the other end. But Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, some I guess sometimes you're not able to, you know, well, you're never nobody's ever able to only do the things they love, right? There's mm-hmm. always parts. Oh of yeah, life especially in the beginning. Hate. In the beginning, right. you just have to do everything, right. whether you like it or not, right? And and so you get used to that, and there's a certain momentum in. Oh, I have a way of doing it, and and so I feel like that's that's a thing that uh, is amazing, and I think that's why uh, we don't celebrate entrepreneurship enough like we we vilify people who are successful but they were able to at some point make that transition Mm -hmm. Uh, i I think we do both things though we like vilify people who are successful and then we like make people heroes for no particularly good reason right like who do you think who are you talking about well so as sort of ever present in the room steve jobs gets gets heroified right but he also gets vilified sure sure um so he is he's the example of the both right Mm -hmm. um and but there are you know anybody who owns a bank or a car Why company are you the way that you are <laughs> every time i try to do something fun or exciting you make it not that way <laughs> i hate so much about the things that you choose to be so that, that actually was, was the Steve Jobs. that was actually somewhat appropriate you know like yeah, yeah. uh <laughs> People, so I so we did we saw the Steve Jobs movie last week. Yeah, how Gina how was it? I haven't seen the new one. It, I've seen like three other yeah. ones. But so if you are a, a huge nerd, if you're a huge like Steve Jobs junkie, you don't mm-hmm. have to hit the button. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, it, you, there's things you'd be disappointed about because they're not mm. accurate, but yet you know his idea was to capture the essence of Steve Jobs and kind of present that in three scenes, right? And uh, I appreciated that, and it was it was good. I don't think cool. I, I think you either you, you either need to be like a film nerd, or you need to be like Steve Jobs junkie to really like mm-hmm. it. So what I always worry about is how is the Waz portrayed? Uh, because I love the Waz. The, the Waz was always my hero. Right? Yeah. Before before Apple's sort of renaissance well, so when Steve yeah. Jobs exploded. So I don't know if you've seen any clips, but there's there's uh there's you know one quote where he says, "What is it that you do?" And I mean that kind of goes back to what we're talking about. You know, mm-hmm. like the creators, they're creating something, and then you have uh you know the other the people with soft skills, right? Uh, they they kind of get all the credit, but yet none of the credit from from different people right mm-hmm. so technical people are like steve jobs he didn't create anything ever well i mean he had technical skills and the, the apple right. II. he was in the garage soldering the circuit boards he, with everyone he else was a right helper. yes mm-hmm. but that but he wasn't the creator right he right. you know nobody ever like i've heard uh you know many people say you know was you know, Waz's motherboards were like poetry, you know, things like that. They kind of were. Like he he had this this amazingly timely ability to create uh like circuits, computers, whatever, that did amazing things with like way less of the parts than most people would have conventionally thought were necessary to make them do those things. Right. And that 
skill, which is sort of weird, and he just did it because it was a puzzle, but it's what allowed the personal computer to come into existence because he could make right. them cheap enough right. by cutting out like two thirds of the parts mm -hmm. and still having a working computer. So um, he was portrayed, uh, it was interesting because uh, it was uh, Seth Rogen. Oh, I love him. And yeah, and he was actually, it was good. And uh, and Waz was a, like a consultant for the movie. So, I mean, theoretically he approves of that. Um, He's kind of the friendliest guy on earth though. So right, he right. might approve of anything. Right, <laughs> right, right. So um, he is not an entrepreneur though. Right, you know? like right. He probably would have just uh, stayed working at HP if he didn't bump in his right, jobs, right? right. And he even, you know, proposed the the Apple to HP, and they didn't right. want it. Yeah, right. Which Steve Jobs never would have done. Right. And he would have, he would have just done it mm -hmm. and dealt with the consequences. Mm -hmm. Which is very, you know, that's the that know. would have ended terribly, by the way, because as soon as they were successful, HP would have started looking through their contracts. And, hmm. So I mean, maybe. I mean, we don't know. It's interesting, but I mean, yeah, it's way better to get to get the, the big company to say, "Well, oh, yeah, okay, go do your little thing." <laughs> <laughs> now, now, HP this week is splitting into multiple companies. Oh, I hadn't heard that. And uh, Apple is the biggest company in the history of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> so you say? <laughs> well, it is. I think it is. I'm. I, I'm. I'm pretty sure it is. You know, the, so the problem with the soundboard is it doesn't differentiate between which ones are long and which ones are super short. Like this, like the lasers zap, like, you know, those could be interjected anywhere. <laughs> but the ones that are really long make me uncomfortable. I'm like, oh, I want to I want to keep talking about right. what we're talking about. I know. So uh, I don't know. I kind of went on a weird tangent there. But um, uh, my business like revolves around other entrepreneurs. So I'm always fascinated by these, uh, by business models and, yeah. um, and not so much for me, but like being, helping, helping just being kind of involved or being on, you know, even being a cheerleader on the outside. Right. So, so you make websites for small businesses. Yeah. So some amount of that is learning about these different businesses yeah. and seeing how they work and right. how you can help that with mm -hmm. the web. Right. Right. So like, uh, there's there's a, a few businesses that are like just like genius that I, I wouldn't be able to do, which is super fascinating. So I have a, a uh, there's a, there's a business where the lady uh, worked or works, maybe still does works for a, a small chocolate company. Mm. You know, they make like, you know, handmade chocolates. Right. Mm -hmm. And so she's an employee. She gets, uh, you know, an employee discount. The company was not interested in selling online at all. So she said, hey, I would like to sell stuff online and here's the deal. So, you know, if, if you're like me, in your head, you're like, you are a genius. You have a zero overhead business. Zero. You have no labor costs. You have no uh, storage costs, no production costs. Everything is linear and and." And scales, and I bet if you have a lot of sales, you could even you can lower your cost by negotiating a discount, mm -hmm. um, and you'll get better rates on shipping and whatever. Right? Um, that fascinates me. And, and so, so how did she do? Oh, she's been she's been doing it for ten years. Oh wow! Uh, and it's amazing. And does she does she make millions of dollars? No, but uh, I I you know, and I, I try not to make it that part the like the money. Mm -hmm. part like my business but uh it's 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 enough yeah i mean enough for her to keep doing it for a decade Ab absolutely yeah. absolutely and with um with little to no advertising cost you know so i i, I mean i don't know if she does now but mm -hmm. I, I know for a fact she doesn't do anything on facebook uh but i i don't know if she she might buy google adwords or something uh that separately. would be the cost though for that type of business right when yeah. you take everything out it's how yeah. do you get people to know about this to buy it online. But, yeah. but this was an established place uh, out of Oshkosh, so people knew the name. Mm -hmm. So, like, she had a built-in market. Like, yeah. Like, people have purchased from Hawaii. Like, I know wow. that. Wow. I know that. So, because we had to talk about, like, oh, well, how do you ship that stuff? Mm -hmm. You know, like, you got to pack it in dry ice. And so she, like, actually shuts down in the summer because it's, like, it's just not worth it. And <laughs> wow, to so do this. So yeah. sales are too low. And this, the, the shipping costs are too high. Mm -hmm. So I think she goes from like 
the end of May to the beginning of September where she's off, which blows my mind. Like, so you can just be gone for three months in, <laughs> in the best part of the year, by the way, when, mm-hmm. when, you know, when, it, when you want to travel or do stuff, right? And, and then uh, you pick right back up where you left off. Right, like, right. That's like, the sort of thing you can do with a product business. Like, we're both in, in service businesses right. where we're like on the clock 24 hours a day, even if we don't want to be and say we aren't, right? Yeah, yeah. And so like that's a super fascinating business. And then um, we had uh, a modeling agency that that in Green Bay, when you have a modeling agency, that usually means that you have you're dealing with a lot of kids because we have Shopco and Fleet Farm Mm -hmm. and and they, you know, that's where a lot of the the talent goes. So like Max was model when he was like three and four. And there was a um, a modeling company that was here doing that. But. Uh, she got uh, she got bored. Hmm. You could tell, and so like she didn't try to grow the business, and things you know kind of started falling through the cracks, and, and then she I don't know moved or ran away or something. But then um, uh, this other lady saw the opportunity and said, "Hey, you do the website for that," and and really like. I'm not going to say like the website's the whole business, mm-hmm. even though I feel like it should be and could be. A lot of the the businesses are kind of old school, and they mm-hmm. wanted like printed stuff and whatever, right? right? right. So the uh, so she came to me and she's like, "Can you do this? And what'll it cost?" And da 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 da, and like, boom, she's in business within a few weeks. You know, it was amazing, and like that's super fascinating to me because like I can do the technical part, mm-hmm. but uh, even when I'm in, a, I'm like even going, oh well, all this should be online. They should print their own. Uh, what did they call them? Like headshots com- comp or whatever. Cards, comp cards, cards, something okay. like that. And I'm like, why? They can print their own. Like, why are you taking on that cost? Mm-hmm. And she's like, No, you don't understand. I'm like, Well, I, I guess I don't. You know. Um, but so, like, the technical end of it, I, can, I can. <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> so, like, I can do all the technical stuff of the business, right? Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I, but I don't know the, I the the other side of it you know there's like a huge swath of i mean so that's like i i'm i know a lot about a little and a little about a lot but there's Mm -hmm. like a huge like area in between where like i would fail at almost everything you you just mean because you don't have the domain knowledge for these other kind of businesses Yeah. yeah and so like these places that um that are solid businesses so mm-hmm. like that just fascinates me. I don't know. Oh, that's super interesting. Yeah. So I want to get I want to get those like those two in particular. I want to get those on the show. Oh, that'd be uh, that'd yeah, be awesome. Yeah. yeah. So uh, very meta, <laughs> <laughs> right? We spent we spent most of the show talking about the show. This is the show about the show. Yeah. So sorry about that. That's kind of weird. I I want it to be about David though, and uh, so. Uh, Talk about your business. Like, what do you do? Uh, could I tell you about something else entirely instead? Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. So, uh, just on the topic of of, of entrepreneurship, yeah. uh, a friend of mine um, named Mark Huber, for a couple of years, we were doing this um, uh, an event in like a local thing. But the the event was called Start Anything, and it was an unconference. I don't know if you're familiar with. Yep. Yeah. So, bit like uh, for people who are listening who might not know, it's like there's no set presenters you show up at the beginning of the day everyone says something that they can teach everyone else and we sort of make the sessions on the spot and then we all break up so it was about uh entrepreneurship and it was super awesome uh we did like the first two like a year apart and then like they moved to quarterly for a year and then like mark's ultimate goal was to do like monthly events in different places around um like south southeastern wisconsin and and northern illinois yeah and it was super cool because we could talk with different people from different types of businesses. Like, so, you know, I'm from the tech end, so I know that. But then people would come in doing other stuff like, you know, your chocolate business right. or, or whatever. And we would all sort of share knowledge. And yeah. it was super cool to hear different people's stories, different yeah. things that worked, different things that didn't work. I love the failure sessions. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about the stuff you try that didn't pan out or the, the business that didn't pan out. Right. Super, super instructive, particularly uh when you you talk to the people who you think are the most successful yeah. and find out those are the people with the most failures and the biggest failures, right? Right. Uh, I mean, so are we, are we back to talking about me then? Sure, yeah. <laughs> Failure? <laughs> no. <laughs> Master no. of the segue. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. I actually don't want to talk about me at all. <laughs> so uh, the... Uh, 
the unconference. I feel like this is like the unpodcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I was thinking when you're saying that. Um, where I, it, it's, uh, but I would love to be involved in something like that. And yeah, I, I love that stuff. And unfortunately, uh, start anything isn't around anymore. Uh, yeah, Mark passed away two years ago, totally unexpectedly, and no one's really stepped up to do this uh, sort of community run entrepreneurship right. stuff there's still lots of entrepreneurship stuff going on in milwaukee and chicago sure. and all over the place but not like by the community for the community which is sort of mark's vision right and i mean unfortunately he was just holding that thing together with his sweat and blood and tears and without him it kind of all fell apart so i mean the the fundamental thing that's interesting to me about entrepreneurs and business is like there are and probably more than ever there's more diversity in the customer base mm -hmm. um you know i mean even if you just think about people politically uh you know we have this there's like a huge divide a huge chasm between different categories of people right and like selling the things that those people want uh, the people over here on what I, I'll say the left, but I don't mean political left, but you know, mm -hmm. the, the people on one end or the other. Call him A. A, call him A. See, this is a technical guy. He knows what he's talking <laughs> about. But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking my left hand, right? That I'm, that, that nobody can see because I don't, we're not doing any video except for the hidden camera. There's a hidden camera. They're not that hidden. No, no. <laughs> but nobody knows about it unless you say it. So it's sort of, I guess. So that's I mean, so, that's sort of the definition of hidden. <laughs> I guess. But the people, you know, so so like uh, the the people over here, uh, and if you talk about coffee shops, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are different types of coffee shops. Even it, you would think, well, that's kind of nuts. Like coffee's coffee, but um, you know, uh, Dunkin' Donuts is very successful. Mm -hmm. So is Starbucks, but sorry, there's a lot of independents. Like in Green Bay, there's Kavarna. And so, right up the street, there was like a coffee, sh uh, uh, bookstore coffee shop that I bought this cup right of coffee. Right around the at. corner. The yeah, attic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is great, but totally caters to totally different audiences. So if they went to an entrepreneur conference, these different types of places, they'd say, well, no, this works and this right, works. Right. And... Uh, you know, those things, uh, it's hard to get takeaways from that stuff. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a set of things to try. Right. Right. You have new, new, uh, fuel for your random experimenting that you're always yeah. doing as a, as an entrepreneur. Are you? So how much random experimenting do you get to do without? Maybe, uh, maybe not random. Like I always think, <laughs> I always think it's going to be awesome. I think the next thing I'm going to try is going to kill it and it's going right. to be amazing. Right. And then maybe 75% of the time it doesn't work at all. But then, mm -hmm. you know. Well, sometimes the, uh, those things are hard to recover from. So uh, when we first went into the internet access business, it just was impossible to keep up with the demand. It was mm -hmm. impossible. Uh, like uh, we literally could have had hundred thousand customers like wow if we wanted to and uh we couldn't the what what held us back is literally they could not bring us enough there wasn't enough fiber to to the area here really to so even to bring if, us enough phone lines back in the day even if you had uh you know an unlimited yep. pool of money it yep. just was not physically no they because wow. because they you know it's a monopoly and they they're mm -hmm. like well it'll take you three months it'll take three months to do that and so we were like growing growing like that and they're like and we didn't know ahead of time. Like those right. are the things. Like you could do all the planning in the world, and we thought we did, but you don't. There's no way to know that you, because, especially back in the day, we all thought, well, the phone company they're uh, omnipotent. They can do whatever. There's no physicality to it. <laughs> they just do it, mm -hmm. and it just happens. Um, yeah. Qualcomm. <laughs> <laughs> and well, the, absolutely, it was totally like that. Like it was a gut punch when we're like hitting, we're like running on all cylinders, and then they say, uh, "Well, yeah, it's going to take three months," and they're never on time. Right. So when they say three months, we're like, "Oh my god, that could be <laughs> six months," and so we're like, "Well, we have to fundamentally change our business model to not be in high growth." No you know, no profit because we weren't, we were not able to grow at the rate mm -hmm. of our projections. Right. So like we had to change everything. And I, in a way, I feel like we never recovered from that, mm. uh, where, you know, we couldn't charge enough and, and, you know, and then you can't like just double people's prices. Right. Um, even if it's, even if you're still cheaper than everybody else, you can't just double your prices. Right. I mean, you could, you definitely well, lose some people. Okay, you so, have to try right. really hard so, not to, uh, 
to lose as few people as I always use Netflix as the example, right? Because there's enough, there's as much content on Netflix as there was on cable TV for me Mm -hmm. in, in, you know, in totality. Right. So, you know, cable TV is 50, 60 bucks. I think, I don't know. I haven't had it for a million years. Me neither. And Netflix is 10 or even less than that. I think so if they doubled their price though, I, I think they would lose more than half their customers. So they would lose, you know, Mm -hmm. so in the equation, you kind of lose some things and um and then you have uh, you have all these hidden costs of you know support and staffing and, and right, all these right. things that just kind of uh creep in on you you know like you can uh you we we were adding staff as fast as we were adding customers and then all of a sudden you know you can kind of absorb that as you, as you're kind of you have this trajectory if you hit if you hit the right scale yeah yeah and 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 of course, I mean, uh, back in the day, I mean, it's it's no big secret. Like, if you had a certain scale, you could sell. Sure. Um, so even if we were just, you know, by the skin of our teeth, you know, we were, you know, if we weren't profitable, we could have sold. Mm-hmm. Well, then the the phone company put the kibosh on that. And then and then you know, with a whatever a decade in you know you know hindsight, um, you're like. I wonder if they did that on purpose, you know, not like just to us, but like across the board, if they said, yeah, how about if we just uh, slow it down by three to six months? <laughs> Wait for themselves to catch yeah. up with their own. Uh, yeah, author. because who's going to call them on it? You know, who's going to call them out on that? They're going to be like, no, we just can't. It's, you know, who th- it goes to court and the courts don't know. They don't mm-hmm. know. Like, oh, my God, if you ever go to court for a technical thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's another thing, you know, getting randomly sued. You can't plan for that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So uh, we should talk about our other uh, sponsor, our other sponsor. Um, and so if you listen to the other shows, so uh, Release Wire is our other sponsor. They're based in Green Bay. This is a, they're a perfect example of like this entrepreneur thing that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I put this auction out for ads and I should have just gone to Dan, um, you know, but I, you know, I, I didn't, th- I didn't think five steps ahead like I should have. And so he has a press release service for small businesses. He's had across the country like 95,000, they say. So that number's That's huge. gone up, I'm sure, uh, over the last uh, 10 years. 95,000 organizations have, wow. have, sent, have sent releases through them. So, and so we were talking about you know, some entrepreneurs and some of the, the challenges they have is getting the word out. Yeah. You know? So even if your costs are zero, you still got to tell people about what, what it is you're doing, mm-hmm. right? And... Uh, they have a thing that they are giving free. It's uh, at connect.releasewire.com that everybody can go and they can set up their own little business profile. And I think that's all that Dan really wants me to say. And, uh, and hopefully a lot of people are going out and doing that and setting up these free profiles. But um, but also I would look into their press release services. And they, have, um, they actually have categorized Twitter accounts. So like if you're interested in... Uh, like, well, you know, we have a show here, right? So if I wanted to get uh, all the technology press releases, I could just subscribe to a certain Twitter feed that, that just caters to technology or any industry. Like, cool. There, there's like uh, dozens, yeah. So, I, you know, I don't have to be overwhelmed with 95,000. I can just get the ones that are interesting to me. Uh, super cool. Like, I was, uh, I didn't even know that. That was the, the thing that Nick was talking about when I, uh, my computer's unplugged and I was fumbling for it. And then I'm like, and follow him on Twitter here. Oh, they have 50 of them. <laughs> and I'm, I, was, I was sort of blown away, but that totally actually makes sense. So, um, yeah. Speaking of entrepreneurs, Uh-oh. getting the word out. Yes. My company, Awesome Sauce Entertainment, <laughs> right now, is actually hiring. <laughs> so, any. Especially younger people who are trying, who are interested in a career in filmmaking, um, filmmaking, acting, any. Like, so what? What is this? What does this position pay? Oh, it should pay around like, <laughs> ten bucks an hour. Yeah. So. Once you're further in. Uh, okay. So what's your business model? Business model. Mm-hmm. How how do you get the ten dollars to give to your employee? Hmm. Those are the, the, that's kind of the, the thing we were talking about. You it know? gets an allowance, right? <laughs> yeah. 
So it's a, it's a, a self invested. What? what? No allowance? How many kids you got, Nick? Zero. Yeah, yeah. There's well, reasons for that, right? Because uh, you you quickly realize allowance. How about you pay me? Yeah, right. <laughs> you pay me. I would live in a box if I didn't have you. <laughs> you should be by paying choice. Rent. By choice, you by live choice. in a box. <laughs> by, well, no, Max would live in a box by choice, which I didn't know. Like all of a sudden, I found out this huge cost cutting measure that we can have. We can live in a box. I'm like, awesome. Bob doesn't want that though, so we'll, yeah. we'll just well, have to. Let her be in the house. I guess. And we'll We're gonna be in a box <laughs> right outside. But you could rent next. out your bedroom to someone, live in the box. Now you have your $10 to yes. pay your exactly. employee. Yes. See? See, Nick's an entrepreneur. Reappropriation of assets. And from ads on the show. So, <laughs> but really, though, what, what Max is talking about, uh, you know, bringing on staff right away, that's a huge cost that people think that they have to have. They think mm-hmm. they have to hire people right away. You don't have any staff, right? Uh, no, no. Right. And genius. Right, right now, Absolute I genius. really don't because no. I've got like 10 people, like 15 people already. You know what you want to do is show. you want people to pay you to be your staff. The thing is, <laughs> <laughs> the thing like is, Netflix is I pay Netflix and then I tell people how awesome Netflix is all the time. <laughs> and Apple, right. my God, what? I should get a commission on all the, the Apple stuff I sell. Right. But like, <laughs> I've got like, 15 people already who are on the show and the thing that like are, so are you are you you're 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 taking our show here and you're telling people to 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 go to your show yes Pretty much. And we're supposed to be okay with this? Yes. Because we were talking about entrepreneurs. I'm, I'm interested in this show. How do, how do I learn about See? this show? You just took over. <laughs> I've been replaced. This, is this, was this the so, plan all along, Nick? I, I just got replaced by Max. <laughs> so the thing about that, though, about, um, about, um, is that, the, is that, we need less people. See, now most, I'm going to use the soundboard. Most fil- <laughs> we, need, we need less people than most filmmakers do because the way our system works. Okay, what? so what's your unique system? The people who are, like, directing it and, yeah. like... They're also in it? Yeah. Okay. Like, I'm a director for some of them, and... So the Quentin Tarantino model. He doesn't have to pay himself for acting. <laughs> but he probably does. There's but, enough money that he probably does. Right. I don't I I don't know. I I'm I'm sort of uh fascinated by that. Um because I see um not hiring people as being the advantage to new media. You know, so if you're if you're rushing out and hi- like hiring people, yeah. Uh, that's a huge expense, and and you ought, you become an employer then, and we hear about employers being vilified all the time. You know, then you become an evil employer who will never pay your employees as much money as they want, no matter how much money that is. Yeah, and you know the reason that it's mostly children is because oh, slave labor. <laughs> yeah, basically. So you're Child so you're labor. Like, if, if they, if you know they that that's scared, illegal, right? If they, get scared, they only get like exactly minimum wage per hour they're really not going to care so there's no age there's no age limit on being an entrepreneur uh you can be as young as you want you can't get a job until you're 14 right so they would have to be co-owners right i know that, that would be the better way to go in the beginning anyway though to try and get some co-founders who believe in the thing and are willing to do it for nothing because they want to be a part of it than oh, right. employees that you That's pay. Why. Yeah, what, what was that thing? There's like that uh, formula thing. The, the guy wrote the book. The uh, Slicing Pie? Yeah. I love Slicing Pie. So explain Slicing Pie to Max. <laughs> <laughs> that pie would be really scared. <laughs> so the, the challenge with having co-founders is yeah. how do you divide up the business, mm-hmm. right? In some way, that's, that's fair. Mm-hmm. And pretty much every way that people do it ends up being totally unfair. Right. Right, like someone will be like, "Well, I had the idea, so I get fifty-one percent, and you're just the murmur person, so you get this much." And uh, once the business gets going, uh, one person will end up sort of 
doing most of the work and some other people may totally fall off the map entirely or uh, someone's contribution will turn out to not have any value to what the business ended up being, right? Because you right. think the business is going to be one thing and we're going to be doing this. And after a couple of months, it finds out, well, no, we're actually going to be doing this. And you have this co-founder who's no longer really relevant, right? We keep talking about me. That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> So then slicing pie is this really cool model where um, all of the co-founders, uh, you, you agree up front that uh, their contribution is worth a certain amount of pie, like virtual currency. You, you measure it in, in dollars. So you say, um, you know, I'm going to be the software developer on this Very business that we're making. Like yeah. no one ever was. Or, or, uh, um, okay, so like in terms of, of Max's... <laughs> media business mm -hmm. he wants to have a youtube channel let's say sure okay so he has co-founders and they would be how would, how would you divide that so up? you'd have to say like what are the different people's roles right so you could have someone whose job is to market it right to like put things on twitter put things on facebook try and get people to come uh you could say someone else's role is uh you know the camera work or something and then you agree on like a, a wage that that person should earn for that work and say like whatever you're actually paying them, it could be nothing, right? And then you take whatever they're not getting and like double that and say that's how much they earn in pie. And so then the amount of business that you, the amount of the business that you end up owning is uh, the ratio of how much of the pie that you have, right? And then there's like a set of things that happen uh, which turns that pie into like real stock or real percentage in the partnership or however it ends up being um, and those things are like you end up actually making enough money to pay your people uh, you get some amount of investment um, someone wants to buy your company like whatever these triggers are I can't remember exactly so I mean yeah and I, I mean you're not the author so I mean I don't expect you to know everything inside now but mm -hmm. so the so the, the the problem that I have with a concept like that mm -hmm. is uh, they're they're sort of saying that uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna measure things this certain way and mm -hmm. and divide things up, but um, that's uh, I I don't know how that's better than how it's normally done. Well, because normally you know you, you say well you get this percent and you're doing this and you get this percent and you're doing that mm -hmm. and it's it's because you make those decisions before the business is even making any money right yeah like this is sort of a solution for the the runway problem yeah when you haven't really discovered what the business is yet and another thing is when people do this they rarely ever come up with sane rules for what happens when someone wants to leave or when you want to kick someone out, right? Right. You just figure like, oh, this is going to be great. We're super excited. We're all best friends. And then, you know, it turns out that someone wants to leave or you want to push someone out. And how do you do that, right? Mm -hmm. Without totally destroying, like, oh, we're just going to have to start a new business or, you know, it, it ends up being this whole mess. So when Gina and I first got started, we, uh, we had a third partner. And um, I had been in business twice before, hence all the failures, right? And the those were just partnerships, and they mm -hmm. just went uh, wildly wrong in in every which way. And uh, I didn't want to make that mistake again, where um, where basically I'm whatever kicked out of my own business or right. whatever, right? So I'm like, all right, we can do this again. I know what we need to do, and whatever. I was uh, 23 and very arrogant, right? <laughs> but but I, I mean, uh, largely I was I was not completely wrong. But, mm -hmm. um, but I'm like, all right, we can do this, but we're going to get incorporated because we're going to get bought out because we're geniuses. Uh, of course, that never happened. But, uh, but e even so, like mostly that was okay. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stupid paperwork you have to do when you're incorporated. Right, right. Um, but outside of the, out, outside of that stuff, um, we were, you know, it was, it was interesting because you're dividing up nothing. Right. Actually, you're it's dividing worth, up negative. It's worth, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just spent five hundred dollars registering as a corporation, so yeah. you're negative five hundred. Yeah. So, like, that was really weird and strange to be talking about because, like, I, I remember, um, I, I remember this very clearly. We had an appointment with our attorney, super expensive, and uh, um, <laughs> my car broke down on the highway, and this was pre cell phone. Mm -hmm. um, so this was in like ninety eight. Um, I think I, I don't know. I had a pager or something, not a cell phone. Game right? over, man. Yeah. Game over. And no, no, it gets worse. And I had an un, like an unpaid parking ticket or something. So I'm like, I can't have my car on the road. You know, I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like, you know, we're, so we're talking about the runway to when we make our millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, I can't afford to pay my parking ticket. 
Right. And so like I had to like I'm on the I'm on the, the on Highway 41 and I had to like, you know, climb through the ditch and jump over the fence and like go to somebody's house and ask them to use their phone to call to say I was going to be late cuz I'm like running the numbers in my head like oh my god, we're going to pay for an extra hour. Right. And and uh I it was a huge disaster. Uh, but still, like, and th- oh my God, how the world has changed, and we like we don't even realize it. Like that would all those things that I talked about are solved by cell phones, right? Right. But um, it's the dividing up of nothing. No matter right. how you do it, is is just uh, super fascinating and super crazy. Right. And I, I think the slicing pie model has a a a proposed solution to that. Yeah. I've only you had the opportunity to, to you try to it. Measure on. it though, you know, mm-hmm. and and so you have to agree to the uh, to the terms of the measurement. Yep. yep. So uh, so like um, and so we kind of had to talk through that when we first went into business when we're dividing up our nothing. Right. Uh, so there were three of us, which works out much better than just two uh, for for the kicking out. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and I don't want to kick anybody out, but you know, like well, up front, uh, you never do. Right? No, but I mean, I never really did. Um, I, you know, I was actually more like, oh, I wish we had more people because, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, a, you know, camaraderie, right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, we're like, you know, we wrote it up in our official bylaws, like two people can kick the other person out. And um, we just, uh, you know, divided up the stock appropriately. And then um, and then we agreed when one of us wanted to leave or was forced to leave that the other two would have to buy it out. And the way we would determine the value of that is their, you know, their percent. And we'd go to a an agreed upon accountant to value value the business hmm. and, and pay it out. But all of those things have dollar signs attached to them. Right, right. And so, like, the, I think the huge benefit is uh, agreeing to a methodology that doesn't, have, that doesn't have, like, outside dollar signs attached. Right, right. So it's the slicing pie is all virtual currency. Yeah. And there's, like, this four by or two by two grids. So there's, like, four ways that someone can leave. And each of them have different rules, right? Like, if someone wasn't actually doing their agreed upon thing... Yeah. Like you can get rid of them without having to pay them anything. Yeah. Or if someone was doing good, but like the business has shifted to something that doesn't include them, that's not really their fault. Right. So then you have to buy them out at some sort of conversion from pie to dollars. And yeah, so it, it accounts for all of those things where, I mean, it's great that you guys even set rules at all. Well, because I got <laughs> Cause, screwed the first two times. Yeah. So like I had negative money, you know, mm-hmm. I had, I owed money and I was making none mm-hmm. and had a you know whatever a, I don't even know how old my car was it was just it had a cracked windshield it was horrible I, I think that's <laughs> that's more the the rule than the exception though like you know having a business partner and having it go terribly wrong for everyone right, right? like no and, one wins and everyone tells you that mm-hmm. everyone tells you whether they've been a business or not they're like oh I don't know if you should do that <laughs> I don't I've heard horrible things about partnerships I mean and- you you have to have. Uh, I mean, you don't have to, but it's definitely good to have co-founders, right? right? right. You know, to, to share the work because there's an enormous amount of work in right. starting a new business. And, um, you know, you aren't necessarily amazing at all of the skills necessary to get this thing off the ground, but you have Unless to come Unless you're Gina. Up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, unless you're Gina. Oh, wait, we, oh, the live stream isn't on. Oh, <laughs> no, she's not there. <laughs> Sorry. I thought the live stream was on. No, but hey, you know, I think that that slicing pie model is fantastic. I never heard of it referred to as that. But back when I was doing uh, a YouTube series with a couple of co-hosts, we did something very similar. Uh, We had a point system set up. So if you provided equipment that was necessary for the production, you earned four points on that. If you were a piece of talent that was used you only earned one point and if you had some financial stake like you bought some consumable that was used in that episode you would earn like three points so we had this system where you would get a a point score per episode and then once we finally earned enough youtube cash to pay out it would go on percentages based off of your share hey you should be listening because he had a youtube show that's what you're talking about so um you know, I, I don't know that I would do those things differently, though, because um, I don't know how we would have evaluated some of that stuff. Well, I think the big difference is when you're looking at business models that require big upfront capital investments, yeah. the pie model may not work. 
Well, right. yeah. I, I think there's a way for it to work. Um, but yeah, it really does depend on the type of business. Yeah. Right. I mean, for us, it was like, all right, everybody in this group owns a camera. Who's bringing it this week? Yeah. You get more points because we used your equipment. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the, what the, I think his name is Moyer, the guy who, who wrote the slicing pie book and has the, the whole thing like uh, I think cash investments in his formula are worth four times because cash is super valuable right like that's the we're all willing if we're passionate about an idea to give up our time or you know use our equipment or whatever but we don't necessarily have the the pile of investment capital right right so um, which is why I I, because I've been burned so badly by capital intensive businesses so we you know, we did everything. We bought, we leased, and uh, uh, like when we were leasing equipment, the stuff depreciated in value so fast that by the time, yeah. n- I'm not even exaggerating, uh, by the time our lease was done, these were like three year leases, I think. Maybe some of them might have been five years um, on dial up gear, right? Mm-hmm. So the stuff was super expensive. So you'd get a box, it'd be, you know, ten to $20,000, sometimes more. Uh, and you don't have that sitting around when you're a, a, a startup. I mean, right. Even if you're not a startup, like that's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, so leasing made a lot of sense theoretically. And, but by the time the lease was up, our buyout price at the end of the lease to buy that equipment was two times more than what I could go on to eBay and, <laughs> oh, geez. and, and buy it for at the time. Uh, uh, and, and I think that might've even been pre eBay, but you know, like we could go online and like there were places to buy this stuff and it was cheaper mm-hmm. um, to buy, you know, somebody else's used stuff than to keep our own used stuff. Mm-hmm. And so the the whole like capital intensive business thing, I don't ever yeah. I don't ever want I like it makes my head hurt. I don't ever want to even think about being in something like that again. And this is a great time for avoiding that type of business. Oh I mean God, there's yeah. there's loads of opportunities right now where right. you can make no uh big monetary investment like that or, no, or asset investment. It's just uh like right now the <laughs> Sort of, right? That was the jackpot button. Ah. So, um, I mean, with all of the ways that we have, like, for free promotion, although, you know, like, Facebook is rapidly turning to be not free, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it, you you can you can just work hard and, and sort of make a go of <laughs> It of, ends up being a, a labor cost rather yeah. than a, yeah. Yeah. And as a single, like, as a solo entrepreneur, it I think it could be overwhelming because there's so much opportunity for these things and you don't know where to start. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, it's, uh, it's a good time for business, but also like a, it's a tough time for business because Absolutely. at the same time, uh, you don't want to pay someone to be your social media person, but mm-hmm. there's a lot of expertise that could be utilized and there's a lot of there's a big time sink in in doing it yourself as the you know like you should spend your time doing your business instead Mm -hmm. of like some of these other things but like all of these things they're it would be so costly to hire someone right to uh, so you you have to take all these other things that normally you wouldn't do and when the business is successful you won't do right right (laughs) right exactly and then how far in are we oh uh far because someone keeps interrupting with the soundboard. <laughs> I, I can't What's that? To do the One hour, six I minutes. Mean. One hour, six minutes, Rhett? No way. Whew. Totally. Yeah, see, we got to have David back. I would love to come back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, okay. Uh, so we spent so much time talking about entrepreneurs, and I feel like I didn't say anything. Um, you said everything, man. Did I? <laughs> we covered the whole the whole topic. I don't know. Well, <laughs> Uh, so the like, there's so much I don't Game know. Game over, man. Like the, Game over. Okay, okay, okay. Enough. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's you. That's you. That song is about you. Okay. <laughs> So I'll, just, uh, I'll confirm your citation before, by the way. It is uh, slicingpie.com for that book, and uh, the writer cool. is Mike Moyer. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm here for research. Mike Moyer? Moyer. M-O-I-E-R. Okay. M-O-Y. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, so, all right. So, shifting gears a little bit, because I, sure. I did kind of want to talk about your whole, like, uh, Polish thing. Sure. Yeah. Or should we save that for the time when you come back? You know, I could probably talk for a whole hour about languages, too. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you know what? Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, you're cut off. You're cut off. I, 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 I we, sh- I, we should have discussed it a little. Instead of <laughs> instead of listening to Nightmare Before Christmas on the ride over, we should have talked about the rules for the soundboard. <laughs> the iPad is now disabled. <laughs> There you go. I have that power. That's true. Cut his mic. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so we'll 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 come back to that the next time you come back. Awesome. If yeah. I can ever have you back, no, I'd, I'd I won't have you back. back on Halloween again because <laughs> kids go crazy on Halloween. It turns out on the and full moon. So, uh, yeah. um, I do like to go through like the uh, rapid fire questions. So. Sure, let's okay. do it. All right. So I don't know what I'll do if I have people back. I can't. I'll have to have like like rapid fire round two or reverse rapid fire. Reverse. Right? Does, <laughs> is that is so that? Then we ask you. It takes a long time. It, uh, Ooh. They come up with questions for you. Ooh. Ooh. That. Uh, no, we don't. We don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> Uncensored, unedited. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, you know, it, it, there will be a, a time where we have to censor, like if we do the cable access thing. I told, I told you they contacted me, right? Did they? Yeah. I would love if you guys did the cable access yeah. thing. Because I think I've been looking to get to someone there. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Yeah, I have someone, but they, like, I don't know. They, they well, because it's, like, sort of public. Yeah. Um, it's You'd have to follow FCC regulations, which I have. There's crazy weird, yeah. I know most but, of them. Yeah, it, but it's more that you have to be able to prove that, and I don't really know how you prove it. Hmm. You know, because so like here, like we have the explicit tag on and we have a kid that hit a button that says douche. And I don't, you know, I don't know if you can do that. <laughs> that's acceptable. Is no, it? That's fine. Oh, okay. I don't know. I, In fact, I think that was a Simpsons clip. Oh, really? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> see, I know nothing. I, I could know be nothing. wrong. I know nothing about it. Uh, see, to me, that should not be. But I don't know. There's, I'm, I'm so confused. You remember the Carlin routine? There's like seven words or something like yeah, that? Yeah, and they're just arbitrary yeah. because there's other words that are far worse. <laughs> and actually, I was reading, uh, because we are doing a broadcast soon, yeah. um, like if you're using a combination curse word, yeah, like something whole, right. you actually wouldn't bleep the whole part. Right, and the, mm. I, I've, I've seen that. Yeah, it's really hand. weird, but I have it in writing if we need it. Wow. We can, Wow, that's Ooh. crazy. We can make it happen. Yeah. I think that'd be really good for the Camera Corner Studios, too, to have it uh, with the public access with the video so people can see the space. Yeah. And well, so I don't, like, that's the thing. Like, I don't know if we can do it here or if we have to do it there. Like, I don't know what the, like, they have, like, if Wayne you're and Garth doing it did live, it they probably have to do it there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if it's pre recorded, I can. Yeah. I don't know why it has to be. Because it's live. through Time Warner, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I send them shows all the time. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know why it, it wouldn't have to be live. Yeah. So, I don't know. I In mean, fact, it would be really hard to censor you live. <laughs> <laughs> Me? It would be easier to do your show edited than live. Well, I think that's true of anybody. Yeah. You're not... Okay. Oh, I thought... I, I, it sounded like you were picking on me. It'd particular. be easier to do your show. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-recorded. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, rapid fire. Let's do this. Rapid fire. See, now you, now you could have a thing. There could be a... This is the time when I want, like... Oh, like that. <laughs> oh, he's, he turned it We're off. We're silenced. That's right. So, like, you could uh, find a button there, and maybe Nick can turn it back on for you. But, You're on. Okay. So, like, rapid fire would be, like, you could do, like, a laser beam, like that. <laughs> <laughs> or you could pick one more, and then, I, and then I'll have my, I have my questions. They're ready. It's going to be the laser. Uh, Where is the laser? I'm gonna. There's there's a bunch right here. There's they're not all lasers. There's like laser one. There's multiples. There's laser right there. Okay. All right. All right. Rapid fire. <laughs> okay. Uh, see, this is why nobody wants to listen to a, ki- a show made by eleven year olds. All right. So I have the same set of questions, and I'm not sure if I should modify it for everybody or not. But uh, I kind of I kind of like hearing the different responses to the same questions. All right. Mm-hmm. So and these are just quick, so don't don't overthink it. Uh, favorite football team? <sighs> okay, so I'm not really into football, but I'll say the Packers. <laughs> when I watch football, it's the Packers. That that, that means right answer. <laughs> <laughs> You're cut off. All right. Uh, favorite entree? Oh. Hmm. Grilled cheese. Okay. So I, that was my other question. If you're vegetarian or vegan. Then you're I'm vegetarian. Vegan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. And fa- favorite dessert? 
I don't recall you ever asking these questions to anyone. Did you? Do you really yeah. ask these questions? Yeah. The Fair last dessert. The last like three. Yeah, three just four. none that have been published yet. Ah. Like oh. I was. We were talking before we started recording. I'm like, I don't know what you've heard and what you haven't because oh. we're like way ahead right now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I would I would have been sort of prepared. Well, I, um, see, that's that's what I worry about. I don't want people to be prepared, but I, you know, I don't want them to. Well, you just have to change your shtick every month, <laughs> right, so right, right, keep right. the delay out. keeps people in the right. dark. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, we'll we'll say mint chocolate chip ice cream. I don't know if that's true, but I like it. Yeah, might not be favored, but I like it. You know, uh, yeah. So so the idea is like I, I these are about my friends. These are about mm-hmm. people. I want mm-hmm. them. Yeah, sir. I, I want I want to know. I want to know, and I think other people want to know. Uh, favorite TV show? X Files. Okay. You keep getting. I haven't seen the new X Files yet. Though. Yeah. Okay. So I might have to modify that and, later. Yeah. So if, like favorite current ish TV show. Because that's been off the air for a long time. Yeah. Uh, Favorite current-ish TV show. I don't watch a lot of current things. It could be Netflix. It could be YouTube. Whatever. Well, I watch uh, X Files on Netflix. Okay. Okay. It's fine. Uh, So you you tend to watch older things. Yeah. Yeah. I like. I I tend to rewatch the things that I remember thinking were awesome in the nineties, more or less. Uh, So up until Apple Music came out, I fell into that trap with music. Mm -hmm. Where I'd be like, oh, I'm very comfortable. Like I want to just, you know, listen to stuff, and I throw on stuff, and it ends up being old, and then I feel old, <laughs> and, and then it makes me sad. Uh, so, f- uh, favorite currentish movie? Oh man! So with the baby, we like haven't seen a movie in a year. Um, you don't watch more movies? Like you know what? Can I redo the television show thing? Can yeah. I take okay. Doctor Who? Okay. That is current. The current, the current yes. Doctor Who? Yes. Really? I'm going to be watching uh, today's episode tomorrow. Wow. It's going to be awesome. Okay. All right. Yes. That's a good answer. Uh, yes. They're all good answers. Perfect answer. Uh, so, so movie? Well, Are you punting on movie? Uh, I might punt on movie. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Classic movie. You can't punt classic on that. Classic movie. <laughs> you can punt on anything. It's your show. <laughs> this is a lot more questions than I was expecting. Oh. Um, well, they're just hmm. quick. And if you don't have an answer, we can skip it. I'm a huge fan of Godfather. Again, I don't know if that's favorite because I just haven't had a that's chance a to think answer. about it. At the end of the that's a good answer. That's a great answer. Him. Okay, I will. Uh, favorite recent book? Not Slicing Pie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to pick a business book. There's a lot of good business books. I'm not sure they would ever fall into favorites. Um, that's all I end up reading sometimes, though. So. Uh, I really like the, the Game of Thrones books. They're quite good. Yeah. So actually, that's what the guys last time said too. <laughs> the Mason. Brothers. I didn't know I was copying. No, no. Well, you wouldn't because it's not published. Uh, favorite singer or band? Hmm. Cher. <laughs> Dick monkeys. Uh, well, he hasn't heard any of Arctic your stuff. Dick monkeys. All of the monkey related. Uh... <laughs> How about the Let's monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about I, that. I might have gone with all monkey-related bands collectively. Maybe not the monkeys. <laughs> In <laughs> aggregate, you know, they... You know that the monkeys is like the reason why David Bowie's name is David Bowie? Because his real name is David Jones, and Davy Jones was in the Monkees. Oh yeah, hmm. yeah. I'm a huge fan of David Bowie. Right. Maybe we'll we'll just say David Bowie. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's a great answer. He has a new album coming out. Uh, favorite social media site. Uh, so I don't use much social media. I guess maybe Facebook. Okay. I probably use it the most to share but pictures you know of our what? baby. You know what though? I mean, you could you could drop a super nerd thing. Like uh, you could consider uh, GitHub to be semi social. Yeah, yeah. GitHub totally is. Okay. Like, it's like a social network for for software developers. For, for Uber yeah. nerds. For Uber nerds. Okay. You don't even know what it is. You better do it. I don't. Even, uh. <laughs> now that Uber is a taxi service, can oh. we still say Uber nerd? True. <laughs> True. Oh, find the nerd alert. True. Uh, how about this? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay, and then. Uh, so, and this could be GitHub too. Favorite person to follow online? Oh man, I wish I had any time to have thought about this in advance. That's cool. Um, I don't know. I don't. Know. All that's coming to me is like uh, uh, Drupal people who like their tweets. I like, but they're not like really classic. That other people should go check it out. It's your favorites. It's your show. 
Consider it cheap plugs. Just throw out names of friends. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, There's not. Don't make more out of it than it is. Yeah, I don't know. I like uh, Gabor's tweets on Twitter. Okay. I don't know his uh, his Twitter handle off the top of my head. Okay. No, that's cool. Uh, I will try to publish it in the show notes. No, I won't. <laughs> I totally won't. <laughs> you I can will. at least let them think you're trying. Because <laughs> I will, for- I'll, I will totally forget, and then I'll, I, because I, you know, even if I listen all the way to the end, then I'll be like, if I if I re-listen to the show and I listen all the way to the end, I'll be like, oh, well, now I don't feel like doing any research and stuff. I want to go take a nap. <laughs> The show puts you to sleep. This is you create this just to have an easier way to get to sleep. Well, I mean, it works. I should I should add some of those <laughs> those special effects like the pulsing, do, 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 you know, the the hypnosis apps. We'll do the ASMR episode. Oh no, no. Yes. Yeah, that's a good voice for yes. it though. Kind of, kind of that kind of did the, the hair in the next things. You have a sexy voice, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then, uh, final question, and All I right. and I did kind of prep you for that, and, and whatever. Uh, I, I just don't like keeping everybody all day. I could talk to you for a million years, especially with the the especially with the monkey. Oh, see, yeah, we we could add that. Uh, I could we, probably more easily talk about video games than what's your favorite. Fa- favorite video game? Uh, so I'm a huge fan of Final Fantasy VI. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See. That's a good answer. He he, he meets your, all of your criteria. <laughs> Doctor <laughs> Who, Final Fantasy. Okay. You're yeah. it's like you're twins, except he didn't have okay. the soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> He, his rating for the rapid fire. So his if rapid fire rating. So if Uncle if if Uncle Eric is, is the top of the nerd scale, it, it, does he does he break the scale or is, is he where where's he at? If um, Uncle Eric's at I'd ten, say, I'd say his rapid fire rating would be super nerd. Okay, so he's like a ten. Ten on a ten scale. No. <laughs> Never mind, I'm failing at my questions. Eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Ooh. Is Uncle Eric a it's ten like out of ten? Perfect rating. Uncle Eric's a ten out of ten? Yeah. Or is he also Which an eight out of ten? <laughs> See now David's like, I must meet this king of the nerds. <laughs> and and kill him. <laughs> and okay, so and who so who would you like to Oh no? And, and Finish. It's chaos. It's chaos here. <laughs> so when you come back, mm-hmm. and and Max may be restrained at that point, uh, who would you like to have here with us? So uh, a bunch of people that I know I think would be really interesting. Yeah. Uh, my cousin Sigmund, who is a Milwaukee music legend. He's been making music for like the last 50 years. He played uh, with the Violent Femmes. He has loads of interesting stories. And wow. Yes. Get I think- him. Let's call him right now. <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah, and um, you know he uh, tours all over the state, so wow. I'm sure there would be a time when we could line it up when he's in Green Bay, awesome. and we can make it happen. Yes. Um, also, I think there's some really interesting people in the Drupal community yeah. who could talk about like open communities and that sort of thing. Like yeah. we could get uh, Cassie Thays on or yeah. uh, Jess, who's in Madison. Yeah. I think those would be some some those awesome people to have on the, those are all on the show. So. I feel like uh, Dan had the only bad answers, and I'm—I don't know—I feel bad for calling him out on it, but like, I don't. Uh, you have to have people that are alive that we could actually get. I thought they were good answers. What was it? It was Jesus and like the guy who invented the hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I it was. So. I couldn't. I couldn't remember the other one. Wow, because it's been so long since I actually listened to it. And the hot dog one, I think, was great because he was like, "Because I just want to ask him why." <laughs> <laughs> so that's a great answer in a way, but like, just, just uh, but then it's like I want to, I want to, re- you know, I would actually, like, I would actually, I would actually want to get cool, interesting people. I can't get Mister Hot Dog in here, <laughs> Mister <laughs> Mister Meyer or Oscar. I don't, I don't, I don't I, <laughs> those two different people. I don't even know. See, I should know that. So, uh, so then uh, we can close out with our track, unless you have any closing remarks you want to make. Uh, just thanks for having me on, and I'm oh. looking forward to doing this again sometime, we, maybe. Not, we have to, because we had the captain of interruptions in here. <laughs> my, so, my my co-host. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I, I actually have. You, you had mentioned Sigmund as a potential future guest. We have some of his tracks here, but I don't have titles. Do you know Ooh, them by chance? Uh, do the first one. It's like the Locust Street Boogie, or the it's a street-based boogie. Let's see Wait, here. Which episode? And to cement this? the geek status, it's also in OGD Vorbis. Oh, yeah. Ooh, can you handle that? Can you handle oh, the yeah. og? For real? Beautiful. That's what, what I ripped it as. What's the 
The way we compress, though, it's not going to matter. So we hear the odd the, the listeners here in MP3. Well, right. I'm not going to. I'm not going to produce no odd. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here is a track by Sigmund. I think uh, we're at 19 or 20. Regardless of the weather, or whether the beer struck our life, every Friday in Milwaukee is a fish fry Friday night. Don't forget to run over to iTunes and Stitcher and give a rating and review of the show. It helps other people find us. Cheers.